Hello and welcome to our next video, which is an introduction to tungsten inert gas or gas tungsten arc welding. So here's a cut through of a standard TIG welding torch, and it's made up of the tungsten. And of course, it's, it's in the name of the process. This is one of the main process changes compared to uh, manual metal arc or any of the other processes. So the tungsten normally comes in three different types and the most common, which are foriated, zirconiated, and seriated. But you can see here in the bottom left, we have a, a few different tungsten types uh, with different percentages of their alloying element. So pure tungsten by itself, it's all right. It, it, it does reasonably okay. But if we want to increase the current carrying capacity of the electrode, we really need to alloy it with something. So the best one we can alloy it with for current carrying capacity is Fourier, where we get a Fourier electrode. So they normally are red 2% electrodes. They stay relatively sharp most of the time and uh, have good high amperage capacity. The problem with Fourier is it's slightly radioactive. So if we breathe that in, it can cause potentially some damage to our lungs. So when we sharpen Fourier electrodes, that should be done in a water-cooled uh, and shrouded uh, grinding head. We have a collet. Now that's going to clamp down around the tungsten and hold the tungsten in place as well as allow the electricity from the system to be passed through into the tungsten. Our ceramic cup is a relatively fragile component, especially when hot, but this is there to help guide our shielding gas towards the, the welding arc. We have a heat shield, which helps protect the rest of the torch from the transfer of heat through the system. Here, our torch body. And at the back, we have a tail or a back cup, uh, which can come in a few different sizes. And we're showing a longer one here, but to get into smaller areas, it can just be like a stub end piece where you cut your tungsten down to be able to fit. Now in the process, what we're gonna do is have uh, the tungsten produce an arc within a shielding gas. We have shielding gas there, normally argon, but it can be mixed with uh, some other items to increase the ionizing potential. So we can have argon helium, for example. We'll produce a welding arc from the tip of the tungsten across to form the weld pool. Now this can be very accurate. It's very, it is no real spatter, there's no real fume coming off the side of it. So as we're welding, we can very clearly see our weld pool and we can have a lot of control to make sure we get the weld exactly where we want it. And then we can add a filler wire. So that will be dabbed into the weld pool on a manual process or fed continuously in the automatic versions of this process into the weld pool to help bulk up and maybe produce help replace some of the elements we're losing in the weld pool. So when we start the arc, a few things that can happen. Now, through our sort of progression of pressing the button and the arc turning on and then us pressing it to turn it off again, we can go through a couple of different stages. So the first one would be to have a pre-gas stage normally set in an amount of seconds. And this allows just the shielding gas to flow so that the area can be protected. We can remove the oxygen, the nitrogen, and the hydrogen away from, from where we're gonna start the arc and the well pool itself. Once that's happened, some sets allow for a pilot arc to start. So this is a very low amperage arc, which just allows you to then find your place and, and get things running. And then it will go through a slope up, really take it from either zero amps 
up or from your pilot arc setting up to our peak current. And the slope up is going to allow, you know, no film shock, get controlled, well pool, stabilization, getting to where we want to be. Your peak current is the amperage you want to run at uh, to your welding procedure or your, your chosen settings. And then when you're finished, if you just turn the arc off straight away, we have the risk of crater cracks. As the weld pool cools very quickly from the outside in, it will shrink and pull a cavity in the center of that weld pool. So what we can do is slope down, which slowly brings, gently brings the weld pool down to a size that when we either go back to another pilot arc or we turn the arc off, we don't get the crater crack. And then we can continue to pause gas for a couple of minutes or seconds to keep the uh, well pool in a position where it can cool down free from contamination and then we turn everything off. So it's a very, you know, it's a complicated process. Unlike with MMA, we're not just turning an arc on and turning it off. Here we have so much control about what we do. And this is just a straight DC chain this is without adding in the complexities of a pulse system as well so how do we start that arc so there's three real main methods the first one is scratch start so here we're going to take the tungsten and we're going to touch it against our workpiece and when we do that there's going to be a flow of electricity through the tungsten into the workpiece and then when we pull the arc back up, that fact that the amperage has flown and we now make an arc gap starts our welding arc and away we go. Now the problem with that is when the tungsten touches the workpiece to start with, it can stick and leave a tungsten inclusion on our stop starts. So it's a relatively cheap system, but it can have uh, tungsten inclusions, which can be quite, quite a, a major issue. We can then have high frequency or HF. So what happens here is we create our uh, arc gap ready for where we want, you know, two, three millimeters distance from the workpiece. Press our start button. And here we get a high frequency, high voltage spark across the arc gap. And away we go. So we've removed the fact we're gonna to touch the tungsten onto the workpiece. Now we have a high frequency, high voltage spark, which can damage electrical items, you know, play with pacemakers and all that type of thing. So it's maybe better for tungsten inclusions, but worse because of the other damage it can cause. And the other one we have is lift start. So this is where, like scratch, we're going to move the unit down to touch the workpiece. But here, Instead of the full amperage, we see a very low amperage flow through the, uh, through the tungsten into the job. And then as we pull back, the system detects the increase in, in resistance through the, through the arc, and the arc is ignited through the electrical system. So we've got the benefits of not having arc sticking in tungsten inclusions, and we don't have the high frequency danger, but the systems are a lot more expensive. Power, power characteristic used here is a constant amperage or a drooping characteristic curve, like with MMA. So as I change my arc gap, voltage changes but the overall percentage change in amperage in comparison is not very much. So this really affects us with maintaining uh, arc width as well as penetration depth if we do not have a constant uh, arc gap while we're welding. So small change in amperage for a large change in voltage, drooping characteristic curve or a constant amperage. So we also have to talk about polarities. So here we have three main polarity types, 
most of the time when we're welding steel, we'll use DC electrode negative. This means that most of the heat is in the workpiece. Now, tungsten has a decent heat capacity before it melts, but you know we can still melt it, we can still cause issues for ourselves with tungsten includes. So DC electrode negative keeps most of that heat in the arc, in the, in the workpiece, really where we want it, where we want the melting and the welding to take place. So that gives us relatively deep and narrow weld uh, profiles, but we get to carry more amperage because the heat is not in the electrode. We can run on AC, so that's swapping between DC electrode negative and DC electrode positive very quickly. Um, so now we've got 50-50 split, so we do start to see a little bit of melting in the electrode, but we get what we call a cathodic cleaning, which helps us when we come to weld uh, aluminium, where we need to strip an oxide layer off between our welding cycles. Again, because we're putting more heat into the electrode itself for longer, our capacity drops from excellent to, you know, being okay. And then we have straight DC positive, so most of the heat is always in the electrode. So the, you know, we're not getting heat in the workpiece, so our penetration drops, but the arc gets wider. Uh, has very poor uh, electrode capacity because now it's just melting, and you can see on the picture that it's doming over, and it's not really behaving how we would expect it to. So that's our quick introduction to TIG welding and you know covers the main points that you may want to read in more or look at some more of our videos to cover. Best of luck with your studies.